Hello peoples and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, first of all, elephant in the room. Yes, a scab on the lip. I know, it's very off-putting. And you're going to be looking at that all the way through this video. If you look all the way through this video. But, so let's not worry about that. Anyway, today, book recommendations. Whenever I meet people, or get chatting to them, I often chat to a lot of people, I give three book recommendations. One is Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. We'll talk about that later. Two is Fermay's Last Theorem by Simon Singh. Oh my God, what a book. What an astoundingly brilliant book. We'll talk about that later as well. But today... We're going to talk about The Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters. Or is it Peter Steve? One or two. <laughs> anyway. As you'll remember in my last video, because I know you've watched it, we were talking about hypnosis. And I said there were three parts of the brain. Well, this comes directly from this book, The Chimp Paradox. So let's get into it. You've basically got three parts of the brain. You've got a human, a chimp, and a computer. Now, any parts of these brains can uh, operate independently and can run the person, as it were. Um, but, the computer is normally where all the blueprints are stored. If you remember back to the last video I was talking about, it's where all your, your basic programs are. So that if, when you're doing stuff that you're doing sort of like subconsciously, like driving, because you don't have to think about driving once you've learned how to drive. That's all the computer working. And that leaves you free to think about other things shouldn't be thinking about too much while you're driving because something might happen but you do generally drive subconsciously now I've had an argument with my mate Darren again on, the, on this fact he swears blind he's never driven subconsciously well, I'm telling you now that you're talking shit anyway so we'll put the computer to one side for a minute the main bits you want to talk about is the chimp and the human. Well, the chimp is like your your prehistoric brain. It is it's the one that has very basic drives and emotions. Um, it's very erratic, very emotional, doesn't do a lot of logical thinking, fires up very easily, and does like the fight or flight sort of process. It's it's like a Neanderthal. It's very much hysterical. <laughs> Can lose control very, very easily. And the other part is the human, which is a bit that's considered, that's logical, calm, reasonable. And is the bit that really you should be using most of the time but we don't so ever had one of those times say road rage you're driving along and everything's nice and sunny it's a lovely day suddenly someone cuts you up you're apoplectic with rage you're swearing at them cursing at them you want to fight them you're that's your chimp. That's your chimp coming out. Because what you've got to remember about your chimp and your human is your chimp is much, much stronger than your human. So if the chimp wants to take over, it does. Hence, you have lots of emotional outbursts. You must know that there's times where you've, you've flown off the handle, or had a go at someone, been really nasty and aggressive. Then half hour later, you're thinking, oh, I was a bit over the top there. 
I didn't mean half of what I said. And you regret everything you said. Well, that's your chimp taking over and having a pop. Your, your chimp, as well as being stronger, is about four times quicker than the human brain as well. So any information that comes in goes directly to the chimp first and it, he, she, whatever you want to call it, assesses the situation. So it takes the situation and says, is this life or death? Do I, do I need to sort of like uh, perform an action for this situation? Um, if it doesn't, it will pass it on to the human and the human will take over. Or the computer, if there's already a blueprint in the computer. Um, now you may be wondering how they know about this. And bear in mind, when it, it's a very simply written book, basically for idiots like me, so that we can understand it. Technically, it's not absolutely true, but it's true enough to give you a general impression of, of what goes on. But, uh, so how do we know that the chimp brain exists as well as the, the, the human frontal cortex? Because that's what it's humans, the frontal lobes, and the chimps, like, I think it's the amyg amygdala, la, 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 la. I don't know the actual terms. We'll just call it chimp and human again. Well, there's been a number of cases where the frontal lobes have been either blown off, damaged, uh, done with disease, and people show vastly different sides of their personality. The most stark one is the one that's in the book. Now, I can't remember the bloke's name. You'll have to read the book. But in the Wild West, when they were um, putting uh, the old trains train tracks across the Wild West. They had people that were in charge of the explosives to blow through mountains and, and such as like big rocks, big boulders, what have you. Now these people had to be very calm, very rational and very quiet people because you don't want to be mucking about with explosive stuffs. They tend to do a lot of damage. Um, and this bloke Let's call him Fred. Can't remember his name. Was one of those people. Very calm, very reserved, very quiet. Well, while doing his job one day, explosives went off prematurely, and an uh, iron bar went straight through his straight through his noggin. Oh yeah. Took out his frontal cortex, which basically eliminated what we're calling the human. So then he's now operating on chimp and computer. Well, that man turned into a vile, nasty, aggressive, swearing, drinking all the time. Could no longer do his job because he was just an animal. He was a chimp. And it's cases like this that showed them that the brain had different operating parts that um, sort of like work together. And that's basically uh, the thesis of this book, is how the three parts work together, how you can um, control your chimp. Because as, as uh, Professor Steve Peters said, you know, you are still responsible for what your chimp does. You can't just say, oh yeah, I had a go at you, but that was my chimp. Now nah, doing me. You know, it's a bit like if you've got a dog and it's biting people, you're still responsible for your dog. You are responsible for your chimp. Um, and in the book it shows like certain methods of, of, of dealing with your chimp, calming it down. Because that's basically what it is. I mean, the, the, the chimp's world is is a wild like in the jungle you now it's got to watch out for danger it's a completely different world to the world we live in now so its actions may be 
not appropriate for the, for the situations that it's going to face today. So in that case, the human brain has to try and calm the chimp down or try and calm your emotions and speak logically and rationally. But it's a bit like the, because the chimp's so powerful and because it can work four times faster than the human brain and incidentally the computer can work 20 times faster than the chimp brain which is why it does all the subconscious stuff um, I've lost my train of thought now <laughs> uh, yeah so just uh, basically you've got to control your chimp to help yourself through life to control your emotional outbursts and basically that's what the book talks about after going through how it all works but if you remember back to the hypnosis video this is what I'm saying about the, the computer is where all the blueprints are and that's the bit you've got to get past the chimp and the human to get to the computer and put the ideas directly into that part of the brain so it's all connected but anyway that was a very rough very shoddy not very well thought out explanation of the chimp paradox but it is a brilliant book I found it very very helpful um, and once you realise that people have got like this chimp side and a, a person side, you can see it happening all the time. You, know, you see people flying off the handle and you're going, oh, is this chimp going there? It is really interesting. But highly recommended. Professor Steve Peters, a Chimp Paradox. Go get it. As a secondary note, I've reached my subscriber... Uh, goal of 16 people Yay! so now we're pushing on through and we want 17 I oh, know you can do it people bring in all your friends get them to subscribe get them to like a couple of these videos get them to watch a couple because again the stats are saying not many people are watching them I'm not very happy with you lot I oh, know I'm a bit boring but come on, give a dog a bone and all that, do us a favour. <laughs> anyway, you lot, take care, good night.